In the middle of the debate with him, I took on white supremacists. I'm the guy that took on every single time somebody was threatened in this country. The only white boy you know who did it. The only white boy you know who did it. Watch this. Of the progress they thought they would have seen at this point. Let's not disappoint them and let's not get to a place where voters in Georgia begin to second guess. Okay, let me respond. I, 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 gotta, I gotta go. Let me respond. There's He's like, I, let, let me respond. I've gotta go. <laughs> a lot to respond to here. Let's get something straight. You shouldn't be disappointed. But I've done so far as more than anybody else has done this far. Okay. This is recent. This is after he was elected. This is after Joe Biden was elected. Okay? Listen to this guy. You want to talk about Trump being a bad guy? Think about, think about, think about this. How did Trump treat civil rights groups that went to the White House? And how did he speak to them? Versus how Joe Biden is speaking to the civil rights group or civil rights leader, right? Listen to this guy. I, I've got to go. Let me respond. There's a lot to respond to here. Let's get something straight. Let's you shouldn't be straight. disappointed. But I've done so far as more than anybody else has done this far. Okay? Number one. Number two. I mean what I say when I say it. I mean what I say when I say it. I'm the only person who's ever run on three platforms that I was told could not possibly win the election. And I never ceased from it. One was on restoring the soul of this country because of what I saw happen in Charlottesville. That was it. No one else was talking about it. The words of pre So just know, Joe Biden ran for president only because of what happened in Charlottesville. That's the only reason he's running for president. It has nothing to do with his international ties. Nothing at all. It's only because Charlottesville happened. Presidents matter. <laughs> Nobody else, no progressive, was talking about it. I did. My son, Bo, used to have an expression. He said, remember, Dad. Remember, Dad. Home base. It ain't worth the job if I can't say what I believe. I didn't want to run this time. I ran this time because of the racist son of a gun who was president of the United States of America. That's why Whoa. I ran. And you remember. Yo, you know what? A lot of you told me. I freaking, you know what, dude? Joe, like, Trump's not president anymore, okay? Like, stop lying about him being racist, okay? Stop lying. I'm done, I'm done with this shit. Like, it's not even, it's not okay. Like, you're just bullying at that point. You're just fucking being a bad person. Like, you know, I'm going to show you guys a video, actually. This is uh, Herschel Walker. I posted this on my channel way back in the day. But he was in the fucking, it was during, like, the RNC, DNC, the DNC and the GOP conventions or whatever. I just got to find it. It was during the convention. Bro, this is the archives right here, dude. This is, like... You want to you, you want to know how I formed my political opinions, bro? <laughs> you like, dude, this is like my fucking all my ideas. Look at this. So okay, this is Herschel Walker. He's an NFL player, right? Trump owned a team. It was called the American Football League or something. He bought a team. It was like he bought like the New Jersey something. It was like some XFL, like some alternate. It was like it was some alternative NFL league that Trump bought into that only lasted like two seasons. But Herschel Walker was in it. And he talks about Trump not being racist. I'm serious, dude. Like seriously, listen to this. And I, I know I know like a lot of people like say that it's anecdotes if you just take every like black conservative. But like this guy's not even like dude, he's literally from Georgia. Or he's from Alabama, I think. Actually I think he's from Georgia, this guy. I'm not an actor. A singer or a politician. He's just a football player. I'm Herschel Walker. Most of you know me as a football player, but I'm also a father, a man of faith, and a very good judge of character. I've known Donald Trump for 37 years, and I don't mean just casual ran into him from time to time. I'm talking about a deep personal friendship. I watched him as an owner of a professional football team. Right after he bought the team, he set out to learn. He learned about the history of the team, the players, the coaches, every detail. Then he used what he learned to make the team better. I watched him in the boardroom. He can be in the middle of a big meeting, but if one of the kids was on the phone, he dropped everything to take the call. 
He taught me that at family. This is back in the 90s. Not this talk, but like what he's talking about. The time period he's talking about is like back in like uh, mid 90s, mid to like, I think it's like mid 90s mostly. Family should be your top priority. I watch him treat janitors, security guards, and waiters the same way he would treat a VIP. He made them feel special because he knew they were. He understands that they are the people who make this country run. They clean, they cook, they build, they drive, they deliver. He told me, Herschel, make an effort to get to know people. Remember their names. That stuck with me. One time, I planned to take his kids to Disney World with my family. At the last minute, Donald said he'd like to join us. So there he was, in a business suit, on uh, It's a Small World Ride. That was something to see. It just shows you what a caring, loving father he is. It hurt my soul to hear the terrible name that people call Donald. The worst one is racist. I take that as a personal insult that people would think I've had a 37 year friendship with a racist. People who think that don't know what they're talking about. Right. Growing up in the deep south, I've seen racism up close. I know what it is, and it isn't Donald Trump. Right. Just because someone loves and respects the flag, our national anthem, and our country, doesn't mean they don't care about social justice. I care about all of those things. So does Donald Trump. He shows how much he cares about social justice in the black community through his actions. And his actions speak louder than stickers or slogans on a jersey. He keeps right on mm -hmm. fighting to improve the lives of black Americans and all Americans. He worked night and day. He never stops. He leaves nothing. Bro, Donald Trump's tweeting at 6 a.m. taking a shit, bro. What other, what other, what other president, what other president is tweeting at 3 a.m. while taking a shit? Nothing on the field. Some people don't like his style. Who else? The way he knocks down obstacles that get in the way of his goals. People on the opposing team didn't like when I ran over them either. <laughs> but that's how you get the job done. I pray every night that God gives him more time. Give him four more years. He has accomplished so much almost all by himself on a constant attack. But there's still more work to be done. If you love America and want to make it better, Donald Trump is your president. He's my president. And I'm blessed to call him friend. Boom. That's anecdotal. That's just anecdotal evidence, dude. All right, let's hear Joe Biden's response to civil rights groups now. Now we're going to go to 2020, okay? <laughs> this is modern day. In the United States of America. That's why I ran. And you remember, a lot of you told me, talking about the soul of America, was going over people's heads. They didn't know what we were talking about. The words of a president matter. What a president says matters. And you've never seen me shy away. In the middle of the debate, I called him a racist. In the middle of the debate with him, I took on white supremacists. I'm the guy that took on every single time somebody was threatened in this country. The only white boy you know who did it. The only white boy you know who did it. Period. <laughs> Bro. Oh, sorry. Is that loud? My bad. Yo. Joe Biden just literally called himself a white boy. It's white boy's president now, dude. Period. Out there. Every single time. Let me time. hear that again, dude. The only white boy you know who did it. <laughs> Period. Out there. Every oh single my time. Goodness, bro. So look, all I'm saying here is, guys and ladies, we're on the same exact page. The same exact page. He goes on to say, and he was angry as he was saying it. He was like, you do know that the Hispanic population is growing a lot. And there are more of them than there are of you all. And so oh. you're going to have to learn to work with them. Did you hear that? Jo Joe Biden's racist. And that really is Joe Biden is a an insight into how he sees Straight these up. issues. The way Joe Biden sees these issues now There's proof. is the classic, you know, stereotyped neoliberal way of viewing these issues, which is like, hey, what more do you want? I'm putting you guys in my administration, and I'm calling Trump racist. So I, I'm the perfect president on these issues. As He's if, projecting. Like, he He's projecting his flaws onto the world, right? That's why Biden voters resonate so much. 
<laughs> he's resonating. You know, and he's like fucking connecting with these people on a deep level. You know? Because he literally, like, he's projecting his own flaws onto the opponent, right? Onto Donald Trump now. Like, tr Trump's not even, like, Trump lost the election, right? So why is he getting so mad about Trump? Like, I don't get it. He's going to be elected president. He's the president now. So it's like, why are you getting mad about Trump being a racist? It doesn't make any sense. I'll be all. It's like, you can't use that as an excuse anymore. <laughs> you can't use that as, as an excuse. To black voters, working class people of color is like, hey, let's make sure we have people of color in the administration who then turn around and continue the status quo. <laughs> no, but the status quo isn't right. good enough. Women. So he got mad. He said, you Women. shouldn't be disappointed. I've done more than anybody. I like when he said, I'm the only white boy who's done this. <laughs> he says, you shouldn't be disappointed. I've done more than anybody. Then he goes on to explain. You shouldn't be disappointed. That sounds kind of like Trump. Right? It's almost like a caricature. Right? I ran on restoring the soul of the country. I ran on Charlottesville. Um... And here's his main thesis. Quote, the words of the president matters. See, Joe Biden genuinely believes that probably the biggest part of his job is virtue signaler in chief. So if he goes out there and he's like, racism is bad. Wear your mask. Racism is a scourge. Trump is a racist. You know, and diversity is awesome. If he goes out there and says those things, he it's like, dude, if you're on a podium giving a speech, you don't need a mask. That's that's just a fact, bro. In that situation, it's a fact. No dispute. Is that as equal to actual progressive governance that materially improves lives of people of color and all working Americans? He thinks that that's like part and parcel of his job is to just be the national cheerleader and soothsayer and the person who's like hey 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 racism is still bad okay and the words of the president matters and it's just like no that's not really the important part of your job the important part of your job is legislation is fighting to implement a policy agenda that's the thing about your job that really 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 matters Policy. But he thinks like just Not saying words. the right things. That's why a lot of people, I don't agree with them when they say, I just don't like how Trump is. It's okay. He is one way, but it's like his policies aren't that bad. Like it's not that bad that he was just trying to get done what he promised he'd get done, right? And it's not like he doubled down on the wall. He did, he did kind of double down, but I don't think he like tripled or like quadrupled down, right? He didn't like He didn't like die on that hill. You know, substitutes for a policy agenda that improves lives. And then also, remember his record, guys. This is a guy who gave a eulogy at a famous segregationist funeral. I think it was Strom Thurmond. He worked with segregationists on busing. You know, like, he's not even what he's currently portraying himself as being. There was a time when his record was abysmal on these issues. But it really is telling, isn't it, that his... His view is like, I'm putting you guys in the administration, you guys meaning powerful neoliberal black people, I'm putting you guys in the administration like, what more do you want? I'm putting you in the administration, and I'm calling Trump racist, and I'm saying racism is bad. Mission accomplished, right? No, actually. Not even close. That's the Democratic platform. Woo. Just a mission accomplished. How about raising wages for people of color and for all Americans? How about doing that? You don't want to do that? How about getting health care for black Americans? How about that? How about That's going to go into our next uh, video. It's about health care. Health care is important, for sure. I think that's like a number one thing that needs to be addressed in whatever administration ends up at the White House. Probably Biden. So that's what Biden needs to worry about. But he already promised that he'd veto it. Joe Biden said that if Medicare for all was on his desk and he was president, meaning it passed the 
House passed the Senate, and it just needs to go through the executive branch. Joe Biden would veto Medicare for all. He said that. So we already know his position on that. Right. How about that? How about ending the racist drug war that you helped facilitate? You wrote the crime bill. You locked up more brown and black people than arguably anybody in American politics today. Yo, does that sound familiar? <laughs> Yo, y'all know I've been saying that for ages. Dude, Kyle Kalinske's watching the stream, bro. <laughs> Listen to him, dude. Does that, does that sound familiar? Up more brown and black people than arguably anybody Bill. You locked up more brown and black people than arguably anybody <laughs> in American politics today. But yeah. again, he thinks... Yeah. Kamala being closest, being a close second. Kamala Harris is a close second to with, with that title, right? Let's be honest here. <laughs> if I just say the right things, that substitutes for action. I'm saying Trump is racist and Trump is bad and Man. racism is bad. Dude, and I've been saying that for ages. So, and I'll put you in my administration, so shh, how could you be mad at me? It says a lot about Joe Biden. And remember, he already admitted in this same call, I'm not going to flex executive authority as much as you want me to. That means not no executive orders on things that he views as borderline in terms of the constitutionality of it. God, it's so ugly. I hate this, man. I hate this. <laughs> he hates this. Yeah, he voted, for, he voted for Biden. This, uh, video, the call he voted for Biden. Civil rights leader. Didn't he? And, I think he did. Um, yet again, I mean, Joe Biden is exactly matter. who we thought he was. It doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, shit. Woo. This lady's kind of creepy. All right. Uh, we'll watch this, and then we'll watch the main event. Okay, this is just a bonus. I don't, we we probably won't even watch this today, <laughs> but I do recommend anyone who wants to see who wants to see it to watch it. Cause dude, Wim Hof low key blew up on Michaela Peterson's podcast, right? And it's like, bro, people were people were acting like it was a. I mean, a lot of people did see him for the first time, but like it surprised me how many people. Didn't even know who Wim Hof is. I'm like, bro, he's been doing like he's been he's been doing this shit, this type of work for decades. Just recently, he's been he's been studied by like actual scientists and they've done like research on him and on his body and they've gathered data. Right. They've done like 